Hey guys, Use Reducer is a great alternative to Use State, especially when you're managing large amounts of data, objects or arrays. But to get started can be quite confusing, so let's take a look at and run through a couple of examples of the Use Reducer hook. Before we get started, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials just like this. So here we have a basic app which at the moment is using the Use State hook to manage two input fields. So we have one input field with a name and one input field with an age. And as we change those values, we're calling update name and update age, which respectively are setting name and setting age in the state. Now, I covered this in a previous tutorial and I'll, I'll leave a link above. But when you're managing multiple items on a form, that form could get really large and could make your code quite bloated with loads of different state items. So we'll just check the form's working. So that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So let's take a look at how we can use the use reducer hook to manage this form in one hook. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set const form data and set form data equals and we'll call the re use reducer hook. Now the reuse reducer hook takes two arguments. The first is a function. So we'll define an empty function here first. And the second parameter is the initial state. So we'll set name is nothing and age is zero, for example. So in its most basic form, Use reducer is exactly the same as use state, apart from the first argument is a function that will be called, and then the second function is the initial state, just like this. So we'll go ahead and remove these two state lines. We won't need these functions anymore. And we can change our on change to set form data, and we'll pass in that the name is the e dot target dot value and e and we'll have to pass e through there we go and we can copy that and update the age with the age is oh, the age is also equal to that target now, age and name are not defined, so we'll just correct that. So it's going to be form data dot name and form data dot age. So all we've simply done is we've removed the state and changed it to a form data state object, and that form data object is going to keep all of our form items. And the each input field is pulling form data dot name, form data dot age, and ultimately updating the state. The difference is that when this runs, when this calls set form data, two arguments are going to be passed to this function which will run. The first argument is the form data. So in fact, let's call it old data. So whatever's currently in form data is the first argument that gets passed to this function. And the second argument is whatever we put in here. So when we call set form data, whatever's in here is passed as the second argument in this function. And this function again is the first argument of the use reducer. So we could say item, for example. Now inside of this function, we can say that the, we can return and we could return the old data, override that with the new item. Oh, the dot there. Okay. And if we hit save, we should be able to complete our form, which is now working in exactly the same way as it was when we had our individual stateful items for each input with our individual update functions. So straight away, you can see that we've been, we've managed to remove a lot of code and we're not going to need to uh, define independent, independent functions for updating each input value. So already there's a massive benefit to using use reducer. But I've prepared another example which goes a step further to show you 
how you can manage complex data and even conditioning of data before it's updated to the state. So let's take a look at that. So I'll just copy across some code I've already prepared and hit save and we'll walk through what's happening here. So at the top I've got an update data function which is the first argument of use reducer. So on the previous example we wrote our function in line. All I've done here is moved that function out into its own constant. So that's being called here. Apart from that, we're setting the default state of name and age as we were before. Apart from this time, it's 30, not zero. I've got a use effect running that outputs the form data to the console when it changes, just to show you what's happening as we run through this form. And then we've got a name input as before, which again is setting form data and passing the name with the value to update name in the state. But the change I've made is instead of having an input field for the age, I've turned it into its own div that's outputting form data .age, and added two buttons, one to increase the age and one to decrease the age. And the onClick functions are calling set data or set form data. So we're calling the update function of our reducer hook. And then we're saying age increase and age decrease. Now, if we'd handled this the way we did in the previous example, that would update the age stateful item to the word increase and not to a number. Uh, but that's where this update data function comes in. So when we hit the increase button, we're saying set form data age increase. Age increase object is being passed as the second argument to update data. So again, the first argument passed to this function will be what's currently in the state. The second argument will be whatever we pass through. So if we take a look at the update data function, we're passing the current form data and we're passing the object that we've just set in here. And then because we're passing this object, I can now run some conditioning. So I'm saying if that object has an age index to it or a key, then run a switch case. And if it's increase, return the form data and the age of the current age plus one. If it's decrease, return the current form data overridden with age and then the age minus one and a default of break. Else, and the else is if there isn't an object dot age variable, i.e. on this example we've got name, then just override the form data with the new object and pass it back to the state. So what that means is we can go to the name and you'll see in the console log there that it's updating the name. So it's running the else option. But if we hit the increase, you can see there that the age is increasing and we hit decrease, it's decreasing. So as well as reducer being really good for managing complex data or um, arrays or objects, in state is also really good for running custom functions to manage and manipulate your data based on conditions. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, again, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel.